investigation. California Congressman Bill Thomas chaired this half-hour proceeding today. come to order. Uh, we have uh, two uh, agenda items today, but uh, prior to going to the first agenda item, uh, and I know members uh, are busy doing other things, but I do want to acknowledge uh, the absence of our colleague from uh, Michigan. Uh, she, uh, unfortunately, is not going to be with us because of a, a death in the family and her need to attend a funeral and our sympathies go out to uh, Ms. Kirkpatrick. This is, uh, as I was saying, uh, um, the older you get, the two things I've been doing more of is getting funeral notices and talking about friends that are no longer with us and that is a function of uh, of a stage in life and I know the gentleman from Maryland uh, has had a personal uh, relationship with that. And so our heart goes out to, to her and uh, look forward to her uh, returning from um, um, a sad event. Uh, the uh, chair lays before the committee a request from the Committee on the Judiciary for an allocation from the Reserve Fund and uh, would ask for its immediate uh, consideration. Prior uh, to opening it up for the discussion, the chair would simply note that uh, as uh, per the rules, we have a letter uh, from the speaker indicating that they've reviewed the proposal uh, from the Judiciary Committee uh, and uh, that the project uh, proposed by the Judiciary Committee meets the guidelines and principles established uh, by the committee for allocations uh, from the reserve fund. Uh, I might also uh, indicate that all members have in their packet the letter from uh, the chairman of the committee on the judiciary and it might be appropriate to just cite a couple uh, of uh, references in his letter to establish a frame of reference for the discussion. Uh, the letter is dated October 13th uh, and uh, he says um, uh, dear Bill, in light of the favorable vote of the House on HRS 581, which was the preliminary inquiry resolution, which authorizes and directs the Committee on the Judiciary to uh, investigate fully whether sufficient grounds exist for the House of Representatives to uh, exercise its constitutional power to impeach William Jefferson Clinton, I am requesting additional funding to support those activities. Uh, and at the time the letter was written, he said the committee has not yet received financial information about its September 1998 expenditures, but that they estimated that by the end of the month there would be a balance of uh, 527000 uh, and some dollars remaining uh, from our previous uh, reserve fund allocation. You'll recall that was um, a um, reserve fund allocation to begin the process of uh, oversight of the Department of Justice, which had not been done uh, for a number of Congresses and which the Committee on the Judiciary felt was overdue. He goes on to say, in fact, we'll exhaust our current allocation in the month of October and therefore the request for uh, 1200000 The letter goes on to point out that uh, the funds are necessary primarily because of uh, the chairman's decision, Chairman Hyde's decision, with the support of the speaker and the minority leader to expand the number of staff allocated uh, to reserve fund activities so as to achieve a, a complete two-thirds, one-third ratio uh, from uh, uh, majority to minority staff. Therefore, uh, there are additional staff and the uh, funds for employment are higher uh, than would ordinarily be the case. In addition, 
the chairman notes that his majority staff, a number of them are from Chicago, and the, uh, the consultants, uh, majority consultants, and the minority consultants have been selected um, from California and I believe Seattle so that the travel expenses are relatively high in relation to most investigations when both the majority and the minority consultants are traveling either halfway across the uh, continent uh, for the majority or all the way across the continent frequently for the minority. He goes on to indicate that another significant category of increased expenditures is office equipment and supplies. Quote, at the request of Mr. Conyers, uh, parenthetically the minor ranking minority member, the committee has expended $114,000 in equipment slowly, uh, solely to support the minority staff. Every minority request for equipment and supplies to date has been approved. And these purchases require commitment of far greater amounts, he says, that were initially contemplated in our uh, equipment account, which had only totaled 187. And obviously, if the minority uh, has requested and been given 114,000 of the 187, uh, the majority had to increase their amount to provide them with adequate um, machines to handle the volume and size of uh, documents that they expected to be processed. So we have in uh, front of us the request from the Committee on the Judiciary based upon the vote on the floor of HRS 581, a request for uh, an additional allocation from the reserve fund of uh, $1,200,000 uh, with a letter from the speaker according to the rules indicating that uh, he believes it's an appropriate allocation. And with that, I would, uh, any member wish to respond? Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very Ge much. Gentleman from Maryland. For this opportunity to respond. Uh, the ranking member and I have not had the opportunity to consult, but I, uh, I do believe I understand uh, uh, his intentions on this and certainly support those. It is my understanding that uh, uh, we will not oppose the dollars uh, being allocated to uh, the committee. Uh, we would observe, and I have a couple of observations to make, however. Uh, first, Mr. Chairman, the Speaker's letter, uh, which I think you read, I don't think we've seen, and I would just ask as a courtesy if did we get a copy? Uh, in any event, in your box, we, we don't mean you know, if if we when we get such letters, if you, I, obviously the, the chairman expected. Staff tells me that the letter was delivered. Well, in any event, cite chapter and verse. We're, we're not we're event. not going to. I'm not making a big point of that. I'm just requesting that when we do get such letters, if they can provide it to us so that we can know know them. Obviously, the chair expected that to happen, and so General I'm sure General staff says it did happen. Perhaps we can determine why you didn't get it, or well, you don't think you got it. Well, in any event, yeah. um, with respect to also the uh, reversion uh, from the Government Operations or uh, Reform Committee, mm -hmm. uh, it is our understanding that that comes from their regular appropriation or from their uh, appropriation out of the Reserve Fund. Did, did, did I, I'm not sure I understood you on that. I believe you are in receipt of a copy of a letter sent from a government uh, reform dated October 8th, 1998. Did you get that letter? Staff is telling me you received that letter. Right, we did. And in the letter, uh, he indicates that he is returning the chairman of a government reform, gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Burton, indicates he's returning $500,000 of the committee's reserve fund for the campaign finance investigation. Um, and the letter goes on to indicate uh, that they were able to operate with greater efficiency and still conduct a vigorous investigation. The letter goes on to indicate that uh, the committee has held fewer hearings than anticipated. I've because letter, 120 so. witnesses have chosen to flee the country or take the Fifth Amendment. You might imagine they had planned on hearings with uh, a number of people being witnesses, and the letter goes on to say the 79 witnesses have invoked the Fifth Amendment to avoid testifying, 19 witnesses have fled the country overseas, and 23 witnesses have refused to be interviewed. 
because of the committee's inability to interview uh, as many witnesses, both here and abroad, travel and the miscellaneous expenses have been reduced. The lack of witnesses available for dispositions and hearings also reduced staffing needs somewhat. Uh, and on that basis, they uh, found that they did not. I believe the committee would have loved to have interviewed those witnesses and therefore spent the money that we allocated to them. But since they either took the fifth or fled the country, they didn't need to spend the money. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that being the case and the $500,000 being reverted, I understand we have sufficient funds in the reserve fund. Uh, I received a copy of your letter as well, which credited the reserve account with that uh, reversion, which I think is appropriate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, however, let me speak to the substance uh, of this, if this is timely or if, if you think it's Substance of the money being returned or of the, of the Judiciary allocation. Committee? Judiciary Committee allocation. Fine. Do you th that, is that is the, what is in front of us. Okay. Uh, that being the case, let me, let me speak to a couple of things, Mr. Chairman. As I said, at the outset, I believe I'm correct that the ranking member has indicated we're not going to oppose the allocation of the money, and the reason being because, uh, uh, as was pointed out uh, last, uh, or about 11 days ago, I suppose, uh, when H.J. Res 581 passed, there was a uh, motion made by us to recommit uh, and to uh, carry out. Uh, an inquiry into the allegations that have been made because I think uh, our side as well as your side felt that these are serious allegations ought to be looked at. However, uh, at the same time, we made a point that uh, we believe that it should not be an open-ended uh, uh, issue, nor should the scope be open-ended. Uh, in fact, uh, we said that we ought to have an inquiry, but we ought to have uh, a result by the end of the year so that we could move on with America's business. It is our belief that we have not been doing America's business, uh, uh, which is why I think we're in such a uh, turmoil right now at the end of this session. But having said that, it was the majority obviously did not support our motion to recommit. But I am pleased that on the front page of the Washington Post today, that Mr. Hyde uh, has indicated a uh, possible intent to narrow the list of impeachment charges and uh, th with a goal of finishing by the end of the year uh, in limiting scope. Now, the only reason I bring that up, Mr. Chairman, uh, not because we're going to oppose the allocation of the money to affect this study, but because the Chairman's intention now, as I understand it, is uh, specifically what uh, we recommended uh, in our motion to recommit. In reading from that story, it says uh, that the chairman is considering consolidating or even dropping uh, some of the 15 potential charges and has vowed to complete the inquiry by the end of the year, which is, of course, what the Democratic alternative called for. It goes on to say, but Hyde, according to informed sources, may consider streamlining those into as few as two counts from the 15, uh, one charging, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on to say, uh, we need to think about narrowing the charges down to the ones that are most provable. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think that intent is consistent with what uh, we suggested. We hope that happens because, as we indicated at that point in time, we think this matter needs to be resolved. It's obvious that that is the Chairman now saying that is his intent and that it needs to be uh, with a narrow scope, uh, which is what the Chairman's intent is now expressed to be. Uh, I personally am pleased that uh, uh, some days after uh, we made that suggestion that in fact it seems to be uh, being followed. Uh, I'm not surprised Chairman Hyde uh, is a fair individual who wants to, I think, uh, do his business in a uh, effective and efficient fashion. And, uh, uh, I also note, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're pleased on our side that there is, as you have consistently stated, uh, the inclusion of a two-thirds, one-third allocation. So we, we, we appreciate that, respect it. And in fact, that has been the practice, I know, by Mr. Hyde up to this point. And you read the letter saying that the staff was being uh, uh, allocated in that way as well. So I know we appreciate that. And I'll yield whatever else time I have to the ranking member. Or he can get his own time. Well, I was gonna, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
thank the gentleman. Um, and if the gentleman gets some solace from a newspaper story, I'm, I'm pleased. The uh, the speakers. Yeah, and and, 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 and I, you, you did mention that was the Washington Post. <laughs> right, so I you, did. I thought you got <laughs> sucker more often than that. Um, the, the the speaker's letter did indicate that the that the money would be for the remainder of the 105th Congress. And the gentleman several times mentioned end of the year. Uh, as we all know, uh, a Congress cannot extend beyond. Um, the, the two-year time frame, and in fact, uh, regardless of what else happens, this Congress cannot go beyond January 2nd, 1999. Uh, and so, if there's well, no, maybe end of the year is now what they're shooting for. If if that's if that's a victory from January 2nd, that you know, take them where you can get them. Any member wish to comment at all on the resolution? Gentleman from Florida. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to comment on a couple of points. First of all, how we got ourselves into this uh, situation uh, requiring this, these uh, funds. It, it uh, unfortunately has been a pattern of, of a scandal. I've uh, had the opportunity to serve, uh, I think the only one on this panel or in the House to serve on government reform and oversight and uh, we have uh, turned back uh, $500,000 uh, to the committee uh, which will be used as I understand here with the Judiciary uh, Committee and that only comes after we have been blocked, obstructed, delayed. Uh, witnesses have fled the country as, as you have testified. Uh, over a hundred have uh, fled the country or uh, have uh, taken the Fifth Amendment. Uh, we've had disappearing documents. We've had to go to the floor on numerous occasions with uh, potential contempt citations. Uh, we have endured uh, every type of obstruction into our investigation, so we do have those funds left over. But let me say the juncture we're at, which may come back to haunt uh, some of our folks on the other side, there's two reasons that we um, should consider uh, funding this uh, and uh, two reasons that we may need additional funds in the future. Now, I too would like to get this behind us and see a uh, limited uh, scope. Uh, just the day before uh, we went to the floor, the independent counsel notified uh, the Congress that uh, he may have, in fact, additional charges against the President. Now, it might be nice to get this behind us uh, as, as quickly as possible, but we may be visiting this again. The allegations uh, relating to Miss uh, uh, Kathleen Willey, uh, I think, uh, are very serious charges against the President of the United States, and we may have additional charges of obstruction of justice. I chair civil service, and uh, if what is alleged is true and uh, the conduct of the President was such and there was obstruction into this investigation also. Uh, every American, every civil servant, everyone in the country sh should be offended and this should also be investigated. Now I might remind you too that we uh, can close this down, we can do uh, what the other side would like. The Attorney General of the United States, uh, after receiving information and this is substantial and credible infor information, now under the independent counsel statute, has a 90-day investigation running whether to appoint an independent counsel for the President of the United States, an independent counsel for the actions of the Vice President of the United States, and another high official of this administration, Mr. Ickes. So uh, we have uh, uh, additional pending matters that uh, may require additional funds. Let me just recite for members of the committee and others that are listening how we got into the situation. It's not our independent counsel statute that got us in this matter and started these investigations. I researched this. The independent counsel statute expired under President Bush in 1992 against the wishes of Mr. Gingrich, Mr. DeLay, the Republican leadership. In 1994, 
the Democrats, when they control the House of Representatives and the Senate and the uh, White House, uh, reauthorized, reintroduced the independent counsel statute. You might say, well, where did Ken Starr come from? Because he was appointed by their attorney general. Actually, Ken Starr... Uh, the gentleman's that's incorrect. That's true at all. The, it, the, wait a the second. Was it, was not under the, it was not under the independent counsel statute. It was under... Uh, Mr. Fisk was, uh, uh, Mr. Fisk was appointed under general authority of the attorney general under law without an independent counsel statute. They, in fact, uh, passed this. 243 Democrats voted for reauthorization of it. All but two, Mr. Abercrombie and Mr. McNulty, uh, voted to institute it. The president signed it into law. As soon as it was signed into law, the three-judge panel that was also created uh, dismissed Mr. Uh, Fisk and appointed uh, Mr. Starr uh, to pick up the job which they thought he wasn't doing an adequate job. So that's how we find ourselves in this situation. That an independent counsel, uh, again, the statute reauthorized uh, by these folks uh, against the will of uh, many on this side, uh, got us into the situation. And they may get us into an additional situation because we have pending uh, several additional serious charges that are not in the hands of the Congress, that are in the hands of the Attorney General, that are in the hands of the Independent Council, again, of their own making. So I'm pleased to go along with this. I think we should expedite it. We should get whatever funds are necessary. Uh, I think that our work uh, uh, has been very worthwhile. If we hadn't completed our work, we'd still have Charlie Tree parading uh, illegal foreign contributors through the White House. We'd have Webb Hubst Hubble as uh, Deputy Attorney General. We'd have John Wong at the Department of Cong Congress. We s still would have Craig Livingston as the head of White House uh, uh, Security. Uh, we'd probably have Catherine Cornelius, a distant cousin of the President, in charge of the White House Travel Office. So I think we have done our job. We've done it. Uh, in an expeditious, fair manner, giving 25% of the resources to the minority uh, in the investigation and even returning here uh, $500,000 for use now by the Judiciary uh, Committee. And this is uh, in contrast to the way excess uh, funds uh, were non-transparently handled by uh, folks on the other side of the aisle when they controlled uh, uh, this uh, operation. So. I'm pleased to comment. I'm pleased also to support your resolution. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. A gentleman from Connecticut wished to comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I hadn't planned to get into a long discussion here, but my friend from Florida uh, and his uh, proud service on the Burton Committee has forced me to raise uh, some issues. This committee has been discredited by the American people. Uh, almost every operation of the committee has been an embarrassment to the Congress. And, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen at the end of the day here. But I can tell you, a lot of people took the Fifth Amendment under the McCarthy hearings. Now, at the end of the day, we'll find out whether or not this was all legitimate or not. But it seems to me, if you take a look at, um, you know, people who've, uh, who've uh, either violated or broken the law, Haley Barber got two million bucks from an Asian bank uh, to pump into Republican coffers. Uh, we have a process here uh, that, uh, frankly, is trying to criminalize every behavior on either side. Some may be warranted, some may not be warranted. The Speaker was accused of lying to Congress, or I guess he agreed that he lied to Congress 13 times. And then, as he told people he wouldn't work to avoid that, he apparently was working to avoid that. So I, we've got a situation here where I think we're about to do long-term damage to this democracy. When the Republicans took over the House of Representatives, they got rid of all the Democratic staff they could. When the President got elected, he replaced the people in the travel office. Uh, it seems to me we ought to focus on less investigations and getting back to the serious work of the people of this country. And I think, frankly, what you're hearing from Chairman Hyde is loud and clear from the American people. Get through this investigation. Don't try to take political advantage of it. And go back to the work of the American people. There are a quarter of a million senior citizens in this country who are being thrown out of their HMOs. We got classrooms that are overcrowded. Let's put the money in education where it belongs. Let's make sure people's pensions are safe. Those are the things we want, want the people want us to do, not to have the kind of circus that Mr. Burton tried to run over there, 
that frankly the reason they're not spending the money is that committee has no credibility today that committee has no credibility because they tried to do a, a job without any opportunities for the minority and tried to railroad a process through so I think that what we ought to do is uh, we ought to pass these funds I hope uh, Chairman Hyde is listening to the American people go through the facts go through the facts in a very systematic and clear manner and then let's get back to health care and education and pensions the things the American people want us to do. Gentleman from Michigan wish to be recognized. Thank you Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I regret the, the tone of the comments that have been made, uh, particularly implying as, as the, uh, the Democrats have that we're not doing America's business. I happen to think that integrity of the government is definitely the government's business and that is one of the issues that we have been pursuing. But I, so, I also re resent the portrayal of the Congress as not doing anything but that. Uh, we're doing a great deal. And uh, a considerable number of bills have been passed, different activities. It may not be the ones that the gentleman from Connecticut wants, but we certainly have done a lot of work this session. I didn't notice any tax cuts when they were in, in charge of the Congress. We've passed a tax cut. I didn't notice any balanced budgets when they were running the Congress. We now have a balanced budget. I think we have done a great deal. I, I, it disturbs me that they continually come up with a refrain that, that we are not doing anything when in fact we've got done a great deal in the past two years and even before that. But uh, get, getting back to my first point, I think it is absolutely essential that the American people have trust in their government. And I think it is wrong to say that by, by concentrating on determining whether individuals have had misconduct that we are not doing the people's business. We are doing the people's business. We're trying to ensure that their money is handled well and properly, that this government is run properly, and they d that we don't have crooks running it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any additional comments by any members? I have no comment, but I would yield my time to Mr. Micah for response. Recognize the gentleman from... I thank the uh, gentlelady for yielding. I just want to make a couple of comments. Uh, the disparaging marks that have been made uh, by about Mr. Burton on the other side, I think are undeserved. I think uh, from the beginning they they have attempted to discredit uh, Mr. Burton. They've slimed the chairman. They started out with a bogus charge of a, of his uh, being involved in campaign contribution from uh, Pakistan lobbyists. As it turned out, when I reviewed this matter, it it turned out that. Uh, uh, the facts were that uh, uh, Lanny Davis uh, was a part partner to Mr. Siegel, who brought the charges in uh, when they were in the private sector, represented Pakistan. So they uh, cooked this uh, little sliming of the chairman up from the very beginning. And then what they did in concert with the Department of Justice, within one week of the printing of the charges, they brought the matter before a grand jury. And it's taken us months and months to bring uh, factual evidential material uh, to get considered on violations. Within a matter of weeks they had FBI investigators in Pakistan even though they brought this uh, information and tried and did very effectively slime Chairman Burton uh, there was never any ta uh, action taken against him just to set the record straight and I think it should be done. The matter of Haley Barber that was brought up uh, the difference between Haley Barber is he testified uh, before the Senate. He gave us every bit of information we uh, asked for in all documents that were requested were received by him. And he was also investigated by the FBI and no charges have ever been brought against him. That's the difference between uh, how Republicans participated who were, uh, who were charged by the other side and uh, how we did. In fact, let me tell you uh, that FBI Director Free, their FBI Director, came before our committee. And we asked him if he had ever seen anything like this before. The, the fleeing of witnesses, the obstruction of the process, the lack of responsibility. And he told our committee it's part of the record. The only time he'd seen anything like this was in his investigation of the mafia. So this is the type of... Uh, uh, of difficulty we have had to endure. These are the, the facts. And finally, the comments about changing the subject at the end here to education. These are the folks that destroyed public education, in my opinion. 
taking a classroom, taking uh, respect from the profession, building the hugest bureaucracy uh, of uh, education in the history of the world, uh, and removing the status as teachers, as professionals. This is what they uh, did, now trying to change the subject. On the subject of HMOs that were brought up by the gentleman, HMOs, what they tried to do to HMOs in the general population, we reviewed what they couldn't do through congressional action. They did to federal employees. The president passed his, couldn't pass his patient's bill of rights, so he imposed it by executive order on federal employees. This should be a lesson. Last year, they had a 10% increase for federal employees, and you, members of Congress and staff, will get it. This year, it'll be an average of 12%. So he instituted by fiat what he couldn't do by law. What it did is it jacked up the cost uh, for you, and you will now uh, pay. And that's what it will do in the private sector. And we had every one of the administration's witnesses testify about what they wanted to do with the patient's bill of rights and what the president's proposal would do. And they all said it would be paperwork and more regulation and no direct medical benefits for anyone who served. So that's what they did on HMO since the gentleman brought up uh, that. And the final uh, great thing that they did with our Federal Employees Health Benefit Plan, which has had over 300 uh, competing participants, is as chairman of uh, civil service, I was just notified that 65 federal participating HMOs, private HMOs, and the system will be dropping out thanks to your over-regulation and implementation of this great president's uh, uh, patient's so-called Bill of Rights. And it is a bill. You will get the bill. And finally, the question of pensions, how we're saving pensions. I can't believe the gentleman would bring that up because it personally offends me again as chairman of civil service. When the president's proposal and these folks here are now rating the pensions of the uh, District of Columbia employees. That's where they're taking the money out to fund their education uh, program. They are rating the, the last va vestige of hard cash in the pension funds. Look it up. They did this last time and proposed it last time, and the president led the charge to take the money out of the D.C. federal retired <laughs> employees' pension funds, and they're doing it this time. So this is the way they want to operate. Uh, they bring up the subjects, and I'm glad to respond. Thank you for yielding. There being no further discussion, recognize the gentleman from Ohio for the purpose of offering a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the allocation requested by the Judiciary Committee be approved. Uh, the uh, motion is before us. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The well, gentleman wants a roll call? Yes. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Mr. Nay? Yes. Mr. Boehner? Mr. Ehlers? Yes. Ms. Granger? Yes. Mr. Micah? Yes. Mr. Gagenson? Yes. Mr. Hoyer? Aye. Ms. Kilpatrick? Mr. Thomas. No, aye. Clerk. There being seven ayes and no noes, the uh, resolution uh, to uh, fund judiciary request is granted. Uh, item two on the agenda is uh, consideration. Um, I'll lay before you an amendment to the contract of the. Uh, Patton Boggs LLP, which I believe is the name of the law firm, the Minority Contest Election Consultant uh, Contract. Um, gentlemen, want to speak to it? Well, I was going to say it's well within our budget, and I think it finally just cleans it up. And as is the case uh, periodically, we try not to go overboard on these fundings, but we find, as we have had in the past, had to make uh, periodic adjustments to make sure that we can get through either the end of the year or January 2nd, 1999, whichever uh, occurs first, which I believe may be the end of the year. Uh, any discussion on the uh, item, gentleman from Ohio? I'll leave that the contract with Patton Boggs be approved. Uh, you've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Apparently the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. And the chair would ask the usual 
uh, leave for uh, technical and correcting amendments without objection. Any additional business? Committee stands adjourned. Um, <laughs> gentleman from Michigan wishes to grant uh, to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. You may be able to do it in person. <laughs> Here's our programming schedule. First tonight, live coverage of a Massachusetts governor's debate. At 9 p.m., a discussion on school violence, examining its causes and possible solutions. After that, a brief